Hello everyone and welcome to this new video um, today about the sprite. So in uh, Babylon.js 4.2, we are working on a new feature on top of the sprite. We're going to call it the sprite editor. The idea will be to ease the life of the de developer when they want to create uh, sprites in Babylon.js. Before talking about the sprite editor, I would like to take a moment and get back to what is the support of sprites in Babylon.js today. So let's dive in. And I'm gonna switch immediately here. So here I have for you guys a, um, a playground where I am playing with the sprite. So what are sprites first? Sprite can be considered as a quad with a texture in it and uh, on it, and this um, quad will always face the camera. So here my camera can rotate, and you can see that my trees always stay faced toward the camera. Okay. So in my example, what I, 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 I have done, so I have created a point light and you know what? We don't even need a point light here because sprites are 2D elements. They are not uh, shaded. They just display a texture on the screen. So they are pretty fast. And as you can see here, I have something like 2000 trees, trees on, my, uh, on my scene, okay? And just imagine they are quad, all the quad here with texture of a tree, okay? So how to do that? You create a sprite manager that will get the texture, okay? And then you say, okay, up to 200 um, sprites will be used in this example, okay? And then what is the size of my cell? We're going to get back to that. A sprite could be just a single image or a sprite sheet where you have um, multiple uh, uh, steps for the animation of a sprite. In this specific case, my uh, uh, cell size is the size of the texture itself, so it's only A3, okay? We can see it here in the inspector. If I look at my textures, we're gonna see that this is the texture of my tree, okay? Just one single tree, uh, nothing more than that. All right, so from the code standpoint, I'm just creating sprite and attaching them to the manager, okay, here. And then I randomly put them in the, in the scene, okay? They are 2D element, but they live inside the 3D world, so they can have a X, Y, Z coordinate, okay? So now let's move to the next one. This time I am adding a new interesting feature. I am flagging every single tree as pickable. And I flag also the sprite manager as pickable. So you have this granularity here, you can say, okay, Every single sprite can or cannot be uh, pickable, and then you can turn it on and off generally for the sprite manager. Okay, so here every single tree will be pickable. And then on my scene dot uh, on pointer down, what I would like to do is call pick sprite, and pick sprite will evaluate what is under my mouse and see if there is a sprite there, and then it gives me a hit mechanism. And so I can, for instance, here play with the picked sprite and just rotate it. So. With this example running here right now, if I click on my sprite here, you can see that it rotates. You can also see that even though I am not clicking clearly on the tree, it's still rotating because for now, the peak system just take the quad and not the texture. To enable the texture, you have to say something additional here like use alpha for picking. And in this case, the system will be smart enough to understand that you need to detect if the picked pixel is transparent or not. Or not. It's a little bit more uh, consuming, so that's why it's um, off by default. But now let's pick on, let's say this uh, tree here, I'm gonna take one which is closer to us. Okay, like, like this one. I can rotate it, but if I click here in the transparent area, it will not, uh, I'm clicking right now, it will not rotate. Now it rotates. If I click on the pixels, it's works. It's working, okay? Good, and same story here. You just flag everything here. So that's the sprite support in Babylon.js. We can do more than that. Actually, we can, uh, and let me reload just this one. It should be enough. We can also have animated sprites. So this example here, contain a second sprite manager that will point to a new texture. So let's see what this texture is about with the inspector here. So the second texture, the player.png here, contain, it's a little bit small here, I'm sorry guys, and actually for 4.2, we are planning to be to let you zoom inside this texture. So that's gonna be a new feature we're gonna add soon. But you can see that we have steps, like animation step. And so I am creating my player here, which is a sprite manager, and then I create a sprite. And this time, the sprite, I give it a animation. And remember here, we can have up to two uh, sprites. That's not a problem, but the size of a cell 
used by the sprite is 64, whereas the texture is 1408. Okay, so 64 cells, 64 by 64 cells are used to create the animation. And here I am asking the sprite, okay, play animation from 0 to 40, okay, and loop, okay, and wait 100 milliseconds between steps, okay. Then you can position your sprite, you can size it, you can even make it pickable. And I can pick that guy here and it will rotate, like exactly like the trees. It's they're animated. The second one here, it's not animated, but on the contrary, we are picking a specific cell, okay? Like I want you to display not frame zero, but one or two, etc. So you can pick the one that you want, okay? Uh, let me just remove the picture in picture just a quick second here because I want to show you that here we have no difference. You can flag the manager as pickable and that's the same, okay? Right, so let me now dig into the new feature of For2. In For2, we added the Sprite Manager right there, okay? And the Sprite Manager here, so I'm gonna open the Tree Manager here, and you see that we have all the trees here, and you can click on one of them, and you have properties like the position that you can update, pickable, use alpha, etc. Everything that I, I, I set up before, right? Well, so let's concentrate mostly on this little guy here, okay? So that's the player one, I guess. And the player one, uh, yes, that's the player one here. And you can see that I there is an animation and you can see the cell index uh, is moving here. So, so far, we are still working on the animation layer here. It will soon update with the, um, uh, the, the logo, the image of the sprite itself, okay? <clears throat> In the meantime here, you can see that you can play with all the properties. So let's pick the sprite number two and you can look at sprite number two. And while I'm moving, you can see that the second one, I'm gonna try to zoom a little bit more on it. It's in 3D, so it's always a little bit tricky. Here, like this guy, you can see that if I move the cell index, it will just animate correctly. Cool. Uh, you can also change the size. So maybe I want it to be bigger like that. And so everything is obviously dynamic and you can keep moving like that. You can also say, okay, wait, I'm gonna animate you from zero to 66, it's a little bit too much. Let's say uh, from zero to 35, it's gonna loop and you're gonna wait a little bit between each steps. And then you create your animations, that's it. When you're done with that, the interesting part is that you can save it. You can save it either to a file or to our snippet server. So if I'm clicking here on snippet server, it will tell you, okay, this sprite was saved to this uh, number here and you can reuse it. So let me dig into the last part of this video where this time I have a, uh, oh, see here it's working. We should have a bug. I'm gonna note that for um, my uh, next uh, debug session. Um, you can see here that I am just using a new feature, which is the create from snippet server. So here you give it the snippet ID that was saved earlier, and it will just reload everything and you don't have to type and code everything. It's just a easy way for you to, to control that. And that the funny part here, if you want to, for instance, say, hey, I'm gonna add a new sprite and this new sprite here will be, let me move it a little bit to um, a higher position so it will be, not be Yes, like that. Uh, it could be pickable, yes. And let's change the color to be red, for instance. And yeah, I'm gonna probably animate it um, over 150 milliseconds from frame two to 19, okay? And then you, you you're glad with that. You can click here, click save to the snippet server. The snippet server will give you, that's the new name, hash eight. It will also save it here, meaning that if you save that playground, Okay, and you reload that playground completely. Thanks to the snippet server, all the setup you had done on the sprite are still here. And so you can reuse that in your code and that's just working. You don't need to write the code. It's actually all done by uh, using the UI. Isn't that cool, right? Thank you very much for listening. Do not forget to subscribe to this uh, channel if you want more videos. Have a very good day. Stay safe. Bye bye.